Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about the Cetra pressure sensors. We use these to sense the discharge pressure within an air handler system. They can also be used to sense a vacuum pressure as well. It depends on whether we use the high side or the low side. This particular unit here features a high side and a low side. The difference between those two points is the high side is set up for sensing pressure. The low side is to be used when sensing vacuum. Now, the output range of this sensor is a 4 to 20 milliamp. That can be a, uh, only one of many of the ways that you can get these. You can also get them in a 0 to 10 volts or 0 to 5 volts. You can also get them in a 0 to 20 milliamps. That output, which is these two terminals here, which you can see from the one that is currently installed on our unit, the output from the Cetra, whether it is a 0 to 10 or a 4 to 20, is tied to the input of our DX controller. This allows us to control the air handler VFD based upon the static pressure. To give you a better understanding of how this works, what we're going to do is also talk about some programming in this video to give you a better understanding of some of the steps necessary for setting one of these up to control an air handler. What we've done in this project, or as part of a larger project that we're doing for energy savings, we have converted a 0 to 5 inch static Cetra to a 0 to 10 inch static Cetra. It's going to give us a little wider range in seeing what's going on with the air handler. Now all we have to do here to finish up is simply take and put our cover back on. To check the sensor for accuracy, I have connected a magnahelic in parallel with the sensor. We can compare the reading from the magnahelic to our reading on the system. The current reading for the hot deck on this is 1.1 inches of static pressure. Our magna helix is showing just over one inch of static, so I would say that we are pretty close. This is to change the control programming to accept the higher range Cetra. From the GX9100 software, we will view the data menu from the individual input. We're then going to change the high range from 5 inches of static to 10 inches. We're also going to change the high limit from 5 inches to 12 inches. We want to have just a little bit of range to allow us to see whether or not we will have an error. We're going to do this for both the hot deck and cold deck on this particular unit. Since both now have a higher range Cetra installed. is also where we tell the control system the type of input whether it is a 4 to 20 milliamp a 0 to 10 volt or a 0 to 20 milliamp it's very important that you set this correctly within your controller or you will not get an accurate reading from your device DX9100, it is also critical that you adjust the jumper settings for the correct type of input. If you're going to be using a 0 to 10 volts, you must have the jumper set for a 0 to 10 volts. If you're going to be using a current type input, 
then you need to add the jumpers to the correct jumper for the corresponding input. If this is not done correctly, the reading from the sensor will not be accurate. The next step in the process is to create a downloadable file for the GX9100 software where we can load the program into the DX9100. To do this, we will go to the download under the actions tab and select file. Since we're loading this from a supervisory device, we need to make sure that we have file selected and that we have a correct address for the DX selected as well. Then we hit OK. The device software will now create a downloadable file. Once we see that the download is complete, we will then go back into the Metasys extended architecture. For Metasys, we will select Tools, Field Device Tools, into Device Loader. From this window, we will then browse to the file location where our downloadable file has been saved. Once we select the file, then we press Connect Host to connect the ADX server to the individual devices to allow for download. We will then locate the correct building supervisory controller from the drop down menu. Once the correct building supervisory device is selected, you must also select the correct DX by the address. Select both the file as well as, in some instances, files for extension modules. Then press OK and the download process will begin. Oh, 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 oh,